Hello, uh, this is Data Trader Pro with a uh, nightly market wrap for Monday, April 18th. Um, yeah, fun, uh, fun, fun times in the market. Um, are you not entertained? Uh, it's like a gladiator kind of market, right? So, um, uh, first I'm going to start off with the futures. Uh, just bring a little chart over here, a 30 minute chart of the ES futures. Uh, and you can see what happened uh, is that we gapped down uh, from Sunday 6 p.m. futures open, uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, gap down of about 11 points or more, and 11, 12 points, and it continued to sell off until uh, Euro open. On this chart, you'll see the times at the bottom are actually Central Time, so it was about, the bottom was about 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, rallied up a bit, pulled back into open, and uh, started off with internals bearish, and, and basically everything got bought all at one time. Uh, huge buy programs likely kicked in um, around 10 a.m., maybe just before 10 a.m. Internals started improving, and then we shot up, and we 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 never pulled back all day. Um, so uh, let me show you where we're at. Um, with the indices and then we'll go on to internals and then we'll uh, wrap it up. Okay, so uh, the SP500 has made, uh, is basically stayed under this trend line until today. Uh, so we've, we've had our uh, lower lows and lower highs, uh, but we may have, it, look, it depends on how you drew this and, and, and whether your log scale or standard scale but you basically on pretty much anything we would have poked above this today so potentially bullish little arrow there to remind you uh, to take note of this little squiggle and um, you know this rally feels like we're getting long in the tooth but every time anybody shorts this it's rocket fuel for for moving it higher and um, it almost seems like the, <laughs> the indexes are on autopilot right now um, for a while they were going up with oil and now they're sort of just doing their own thing they're um, they're just going up because price is going up. I'm not sure that things are on sale. First round of earnings reports have been reasonably negative or flat. Um, but yeah, for, for one reason or another, uh, reasons we may not always understand, uh, markets are being bought. So um, that's what's happening here. We'll go uh, compare to the uh, Russell. Uh, Russell has a much lower high, much, uh, you know, compare this to the SP 500, um, you know, where we're almost back at all time highs. Look at the Russell. So people have been very bullish, the Russell, but it's been very choppy up moves uh, to a much lower high so far. But then again, I, red line is its 200 day, it broke its 200 day and broke uh, its trend line. We had a little consolidation here and it looked like that was going to be the impetus for a pullback. Uh, we did pull back a little bit, and certainly the TF futures pulled back significantly overnight. But then, of course, like everything else, we shot up. Uh, note where we are in uh, stochastics. Uh, we're about as high as we can go. Oh, my cat. My cat has decided to intervene in this. So I'll try and ignore her as long as I can. Um, the NASDAQ 100, uh, quite high as well. And um, I'm going to have to throw my cat out soon if she doesn't ignore it. Yeah, okay, settle down, please. And NASDAQ 100, we've got, again, I haven't drawn a trend line on this, but but it would be something like, like oops, we'll try again. Um, all right. So actually, we may have maintained... We've got two hits. We might have just started to pierce through it. So let's stick a little arrow there. And stick them there. And we'll keep an eye on that. Um, I wouldn't say that that's <laughs> tremendously bullish. After hours, um, I will note that a major component, uh, well, fairly major component of uh, the NASDAQ 100 Netflix uh, had a huge drop. Uh, so we're in the quiet period between um, futures uh, close and reopen. Uh, the night session will start at uh, 6 p.m., the Globex session. And uh, so we'll have to see what NASDAQ does, uh, NASDAQ futures do when this reopens. My guess is we get some down, some pullback. Uh, but how long-lasting that'll be, I don't know. I don't know.
And um, all right, let's move on to the Dow. Uh, Dow, I was drawing a trend line here. This is from a long time ago. So obviously this, uh, let's extend this back to, to this high. Get a little more accurate picture. The Dow is bullish. The Dow busted its trend line quite some time ago. And really, aside from a little pullback uh, to retest uh, here, I, I believe that's a 20. Yeah. So the 20 has been rising up the whole whole time with the Dow throughout this whole. It's it's barely touched it in, you know, a month, month and a half. It touched it here and shot right back up. So Dow is very bullish. I wouldn't stand in front of that freight train. Um, we're going to look at the same thing on. Oh, she's not going to stop, is she? going to drive me crazy. I don't know if you can hear her. Okay, so we're going to draw that and the transports are bullish as well. Um, again, pulled back, they tested a lower moving average, which was the 50 and uh, bounced back up and, and seemed to be closing above this a uh, back test of this trend line. So that could be very bullish. but. Um, let's look at some other uh, internals which may paint a slightly different picture. I note that you know on all the indexes you're you're above your eight, above your twenty, above your fifty, above your hundred and two hundred uh, moving averages. So that's a quick glance to see what kind of positioning we're in. The advanced decline line uh, is a much lower high, and and uh, you know although it it does appear to be an inverse head and shoulders building, it would still need. Uh, a move down to this level, probably 13,000, 13,100, uh, a pullback before we could uh, complete that. It doesn't have a right shoulder. Uh, it's missing a shoulder. Um, the absolute breadth has been obviously a regression channel and an uptrend. Um, uh, although the stochastics are again overbought uh, and it's nowhere near its high end. So, yeah what to make of that is probably it's going to have a pullback to its midline at least. Um, I'm going to dump the cat outside and I will be back in one second. <laughs> Apologies. That, that's kind of hilarious actually. Uh, cat break. Um, here we are. Uh, okay, McClellan Oscillator, uh, you know, on massive up move, we've only got a reading of 69. Uh, not, I mean, it's bullish, it's positive, but it's not not anywhere where it, uh, near where it gets to on huge up moves. So we'll have to see. Again, uh, stochastics above 80. Not uh, terribly promising for continuation, but we'll see. Um, this has been the fuel, the summation index has, in my view, been the fuel for a lot of this. We got to a very, very low level, like almost an all-time low. Actually, I'm not sure if we can go to weekly. Yeah, not an all-time low, but the lowest we've been since 2009 on that last correction. Uh, huge downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. Oh, yeah, actually, still, if we want to snap a regression uh, channel on this. Still technically in a downtrend, um, you know, and, but this is, a <laughs> take it with a grain of salt, it's in a downtrend since this whole bull rally has been going. So we've been in a downtrend, uh, lower highs, uh, lower lows for quite a while, certainly since 2012, but these are very long-term indicators, right? They're not going to tell you much about what's happening tomorrow. Uh, the point of this would be that you had a, you know, second lowest uh, reading since 2008, 2009, uh, and we've obviously that, that allowed for a strong bounce, and that's where we are. So I think the, the daily version of this shows that we're very high, um, we're probably into, th you know, and we're still, we're still below zero, right? We're still in negative territory, even after that massive rally. So, so we'll have to see, um, how this plays out. I think this will probably top soon because it, it generally, for, for the summation, this is quite a long up run. This is a long rally. Um, let's go to volatility, uh, VIX clobbered like a baby fur seal. Um, again, 
<laughs> VXX and and the uh, certainly the leveraged products like UVXY and uh, TVIX absolutely clobbered. VXX was under 16 today. Um, the VIX index uh, is not at all time lows, but it's in the range of as pretty much as low as it gets. Um, I would say uh, before you know. It, it, in the tens is extremely low. Much more common, you know, is in the twelves, and we're in the we're in the low thirteens here. So, um, you know, big moves tend to come, or at least uh, um, uh, reversions to mean moves come from areas like this. Is what I would say. Uh, the VVIX or volatility volatility also quite low. Uh, VXST the short term. This is the nine day version of the VIX. Uh, in the 12s, so it, it certainly anytime you see um, VXST under 12 and certainly closer to 10, you you can be almost assured of a of a snapback in volatility. Um, here, to me, this is an interesting chart. VXV, which is the three month version of the VIX index, this is a longer term chart, obviously going back a couple years almost. Um, we keep making a series, and we've still respected this trend line. Um, keep making a series of higher lows. So long-term, well, I would say mid-term volatility expressed as a long-term chart uh, is growing slowly. So it's building a base. So what this means, we have a big volatility move in store. Uh, it's probably not for another little while out. It's probably not going to happen tomorrow. Um, but um, we're getting back to this trend. We're very close to this trend line. So if we poke below it, well, it just means it's going to take longer. That's all. Um, but but it will come. Uh, very much mean reverting again, and the long term trend line is up. Um, let's cut this out, and we will switch to um, the site. All sectors were up today. Um, obviously, oil was down slightly, but it was well up uh, off its uh, five percent uh, drop in the futures. Uh, gold slightly down, U.S. dollar slightly down. But when you see all the sectors like financials, technology, biotech, healthcare, blah 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 blah, they they all are up. Um, that's just speaks to the strength of the move in the market currently. And you just, it's very hard to fade that. It's a you know you could try shorting it, but it's it's pretty much like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. It's it's a very you're really going against the grain here. So well, I like to say, don't fight City Hall. It, it, some of these moves may not make sense. They don't always make sense to me, but for some reason, people are buying. They see value here, or at least they're buying high because they think they see higher uh, down the road. So you know, fighting this kind of move is is very treacherous. So. I'll leave it at that. Uh, trend today. We started uh, in the morning negative. Um, we got a neutral day reading because that reads at 10.15 a.m. So you can see that it was bearish uh, the first part of the day. It's missing a little bit of this chart. Uh, but, uh, but bearish start to the day. Bearish start on the DTP MCC, which is our version of the McClellan uh, oscillator. And <clears throat> But right before 10 a.m., they started buying. There was a big buy program, and everything went up. And, you know, if you're seeing internals that are, um, let's go to breadth. If you're seeing internals painting a picture um, that's fairly neutral, uh, let's just let that load, um, neutral or, or bearish, and you're not sure what's going on, really, I would say, you know, go back to the, trend page let's have you know you can see that you you started off the day negative 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 on the advanced declines also the first move was slightly negative on uh, the, the volume delineators which are basically a moving average of net volume um, so the first move was was down but things didn't really go in that direction and you know the best way that you can find that is I, I would say if you're ever confused about looking at the internals and they're painting a mixed picture or they don't agree with price then the the tiebreaker is the dollar weighted buying pressure chart 
It's a uh, dollar weighted net volume of our own index of key market moving stocks. And when they are buying this, and even if breadth is, is neutral, they're, they're pushing money into stocks in an attempt to move the market in the direction that they want to go. So, and this trended up all day and so did price. So uh, when this is in agreement with the MCC, which is most of the time, 90% of the time or so, it will, uh, it will be in the same direction. These will override any potential um, neutral readings in breadth. So just so you know, that's the tiebreaker. Um, where are we at in, let's see, volatility. I'll open that in a new tab. Um, let's load that up. The big story is the VIX futures contango is more than 17%. So it's a huge headwind in front of things like VXX and UVXY, TVIX as mentioned. Uh, even with VXST finishing up in the greens, in green, and VIX neutral most of the day, with this situation, uh, ETPs like VXX and certainly the, the leveraged ones, UVXY, etc., will get killed. And that's what they're, that's what's happening. That's why we have this. You know, you may get a green VIX reading and all three gauges may be green. You know, all three sets, the VXST set, VIX, VXV, may all be green. But when this is buried, you know, almost to its limit, it's going to be very, very hard for VXX to get up off the ground. So it would take, it would take a very strong move in volatility to lift that front month future up enough for, VX, uh, for VXX and UVXY not to uh, get hammered by negative roll yield. Um, VVIX, the volatility of volatility, down also. Um, let's have a look at block trades on those guys let's look at them all and then we'll wrap it up uh, index ETFs okay so we got a, a fairly uh, big block trade on close on spy uh, anything matching not on the queues not really some smaller size that's a very that's a that was above price we, I think that's a that's a false print from the other day that price never got up there, so that's just a bad print. Bad data from the, the data supplier. You can see the cluster of big buys at the bottom, and we shot up. Um, same thing on, on, you know, at every support. You know, you see these late prints come in. A big block trade and late prints, and you know that you have support. Um, fall down a little bit, you get more big blocks, more late prints showing support, and you're on highs. So now... You know, if you want to think that this is, could be a sell, you're going to have to see price remain below here. So this is 209.25 uh, area uh, on IWM. You've got a big end of day print, uh, 1.75 million shares roughly, and some smaller ones. Um, price level uh, 113.29, and again uh, higher than the trend line. I think the trend line on IWM came to about 112.5 or 112.60. So you're above that, but you, you may have a sell here. Well, we'll have to see. It looked like things like this might be sells, but you know, obviously somebody bought with the idea that price could go up another dollar or, or something like that. If you're buying at 1.7 million shares. All you need is to get a dollar out of that, and IWM will move a dollar in a day, and if that's $1.75 million in a day that you can make. Isn't it nice to have uh, that kind of liquidity <laughs> at your disposal? Um, volatility uh, ETPs, so this is v VXX. We had our cells uh, at the high. Um, these may be some early buys front running, but we don't really know. Um, certainly price is below them, so I wouldn't regard them as, as bullish until at least we see more down at the lows and then price gets gets above those prints. Otherwise, we'll just have to stay bearish. Uh, that that huge contango is, is working against this. Uh, XIV, XIV has been just a, a machine. I mean, it came off its lows of in the 15s in February and has, has almost doubled in a couple of months. So uh, vastly outperforming uh, the indexes, which also had good runs, but 
but you know nothing in the index space <laughs> doubled or or came even close to that so i think the indexes are about 15 percent up or so or so roughly um i think we, we want to cover metals I've been looking at metals uh, very much lately. You know, certainly gold's been in a in a big bull run. We, you know, some buys here and then a bunch of sells, and maybe maybe another some supporting buys in here. We'll have to see if gold GLD uh, stays above the uh, one seventeen eight, say one one eighteen level. Um, then it can be a little more bullish. Uh, GDX uh, has had some fairly well a lot of these trades are rebalancing trades from the leverage ETFs based on GDX the, the uh, NUGT and DUST uh, ETFs uh, those come in right at 4 p.m. exactly at 4 p.m. they rebalance the ETFs so side you know the big trades are all at 4 p.m. so it, it, a little bit hard to distinguish we're not seeing any big uh, intraday trades so far so a little bit hard to determine the direction on that um, SLV, you know, we're right around these print levels. So 115.45, we're going to have to be bullish above that and bearish below. I think that's it for a wrap for tonight. So, you know, indexes are still bullish. Uh, Long-term internals are bullish, but, you know, pointing towards uh, a turn down soon. Every time we say that or every time we think we're going to get a turn down, we get a quick move down uh, that lasts a very short period of time, and then they they buy like crazy. They buy like it was on sale, Christmas time. So we'll have to see um, when that ends. When they turn the machines off of buying every dip, uh, until then we have to you know be very careful about stepping in front of the freight train. That would be my message for tonight. Okay, thanks for joining, and uh, we'll see you next time.